All right, let's talk about solfege. Now, many of you may uh, have heard the term solfege, or, or heard it sung, or know what it is, or know if you uh, know what it is when you hear it without knowing uh, what it's called. But solfege is, at its most basic um, reality, a system of syllables which make it easy to sight sing. It's basically a naming system for the notes in order that we can differentiate one note from another. Um, there are other systems already. Some of them you may actually already know, like the note, this name, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. You've probably already learned that. Those are the names we give to the notes. There are other ways that we can uh, refer to scale degrees or, or the names of the notes within the scale. I learned actually first scale degree numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Going back to the octave and uh, recycling just as it does to C again when you get back there. That's another way. Solfege is yet uh, is yet another way to do that. The reason we use solfege is because it really is an international music language. Uh, you can go anywhere in the world and people will be sight singing and uh, able to understand in solfege using the syllables that we have already, uh, that, that are, have come down to us from time immemorial. And by time immemorial, I uh, refer to uh, where most of you probably heard solfege the first time, which is where I did, which was uh, Maria von Trapp in The Sound of Music, teaching it to the von Trapp children. And these are the syllables, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Okay, and those are all of the solfege syllables. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti. And then we recycle at the octave back to do, and then it continues on up. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do is uh, far high and as low as you need to. The solfege that we use, and, and there may be some of you students who are uh, who have experienced solfege or have learned in solfege, and if you've learned it in other countries, you may have learned it in a different way than we are going to be using it in class over the next six quarters of the ear training sequence. There are two ways um, solfege may be performed, or two, uh, um, uh, two ideals. One is called fixed or fixed do. Fixed do solfege means that do, which is in, in this case, we are in treble clef, we are in the key of C major, that C is do. Just like the name of the note C is always C, regardless of what key you're in, in fixed do solfege, do will always be C, regardless of the key that is being, uh, that is being performed. So if, for instance, if I were here in the key of A major with three sharps, and I put in a C, in this case actually a C sharp, it would still be Do. We are not using that system, however. Um, there are uh, advantages to the system. Uh, one advantage to the fixed Do system is that the, the name of the note is always the same no matter uh, how or in what context it is encountered. Um, the reason I don't use fixed do is because we already have a fixed system of naming notes regardless of the key, and that is the name of the note themselves, C. So uh, in the key of A, C will be C, uh, regardless of what key it's in. So we already have a system, uh, so this is a little bit redundant to do it with the fixed do system. In my opinion, um, what we use is the movable do system. Movable do uh, determines that regardless of your key, the root note, so if you are in the key of C, the root note is C. If you are in the key of A, again, your root note is A. If you are in the key of E flat. Your root note is E flat. And in the movable system, the root note will become Do. 
So in this case, this A, which is the root note of the key of A, is now Do. And in this case, E flat, which is the root note of the key of E flat, the first scale degree, or the tonic, is Do. Okay, and then onward and upward from there. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. and so on, in every single key. This is potentially awkward at the very beginning uh, because you will have to uh, memorize um, where in the scale you are uh, with different scales and different keys. Ultimately, however, this will be an advantage because the function of each of the syllables or each of the notes within the scale will uh, be determined by the solfege syllable and so you will hear scales and you will hear melodies by the function and the solfege will really help you with that. Um, and when you uh, watch the video, with uh, the secrets of the scales video, I'll tell you why. Why the, uh, the solfege syllabication is really important for hearing the tendency tones that are inherent in each of the scales. But this is the basic solfege scale. Um, in in uh, later videos I'm going to explain um, um, how we deal with solfege chromatically, how we deal with minor scales and things in solfege. So uh, when it's time, you can watch those videos as well. But this is the overview of solfege, why we use movable dough, and how we use movable dough.